Um, we liked nature study. I actually, I didn't even know the term nature study when I started to homeschool. And, um, and, but I quickly learned and, and um, loved it. And my children were both nature lovers from the very beginning. So that was a, an easy way to step into science. And um, you could teach science from the six days of creation and um, cover everything and focus on a different part uh, of, uh, or a different day um, for a year or a couple of months at a time. You certainly don't have to ever try to do all of that in one year. That's a lot to try to do, but um, it's a place to start. Um, some of the tools that you need are field guides. This is my favorite. The North American Wildlife um, Field Guide. It's published by Reader's Digest. Ooh, I don't know if you can see that. Um, and you can probably find it in thrift stores. I know Amazon um, has it because I, I have bought a lot of these to give away through the years um, because I love it. It's got color illustrations and it tells you how to identify things. It's not the most thorough in the world. It's not meant to be but it's a really good helper for you um, in getting started. The other thing that you need are different field guides. I have one on birds and weather and trees, and, and, but I think there's like insects and rocks and all kinds of stuff of nature. You can find these in thrift stores um, real easy too. I don't really have any particular favorite, just field guide again, pictures show you what what you're looking for. Um, another piece of equipment I highly recommend are binoculars because there's a lot even in the winter time that you can observe from the from your house but they're fun to take when you hike or go for a walk um, or if you're camping whatever and then things for like things like insects and um, butterflies and rocks and things you always need a good magnifying glass like this and um, unless you have really good eyesight, then maybe you don't. And then the last thing that if you were doing a bird study that you could find probably, um, find this online too. I'm sure I bought this in the years past at um, a homeschool Iowa conference. This is backyard bird calls. And um, I wanted to be able to identify them. And so we were able to do that just by listening to that. Um, even once in a while, I'll still um, sit on our front porch when I'm out there in the evening and try to sing back and forth to a bird. It usually doesn't work, but at least I, it's fun to try. So I really like that. This one ha particular one has 24 um, different bird calls to get to know. And I'm sure there are uh, things related to other science topics as well. But these are just some of the fun things that you um, can add to your science studies. Something that I really liked and we used a lot is the Handbook of Nature Study. This is a big old thing. It's not exactly something you wanna put in your backpack if you're going for a hike, but it's really um, great for bringing specimens home of leaves or feathers or rocks or uh, flowers or whatever it is that you find um, out in nature or in your own backyard. And she goes into, um, like this is about ants, and so you can see a lot of, lot of text, big illustrations, it's all black and white, so not a lot of the bells and whistles that you might be used to, but um, very, very good. This, is, this was kind of like the gold standard of nature study when I was a young homeschooling mom, and I still get this out once in a while and use it when I uh, come across a, a new critter or wildflowers, anything, something in my yard. So I really like that. Again, Handbook of Nature Study by Anna Botsford Comstock. So that's some basic tools to use. Now I'm gonna um, share some books with you because I think these might be easier books to find. Um, I've said that I really like out of print books because they haven't been um, revised so much that they're not so good anymore. One easy thing to do is if you know what you're gonna do for history, um, when you study a certain era of history, also study the scientists of that. Um, era. So I'm going to just talk about some scientists real quick. And then these, if I'm showing you a book, it's because I think that it's worth purchasing, um, for sure checking out. So most of these I've read, so I can vouch that they're good. Along came Galileo. And this is by Jean Bendick. Jean um, has written a lot of science books. And so anything that you find by her is usually well written. Um, she's not a Christian author per se. 
but she um, has really good solid information. And um, you know what, sometimes some of the authors that I might talk about or show you um, right from an evolutionary viewpoint or worldview. And um, that's okay, your children need to rub up against that. And, and that gives you a great opportunity to talk through why your family um, does not believe that or um, what it is about that that you, that you struggle with. So, so don't be afraid of that. Those are really great opportunities. Part of the wonder of homeschooling is building that relationship with your children and being able to talk with them about anything. And so, so those are give you good opportunities. This is the quest of Johannes Kepler, an early astronomer. Um, you can see that it's a very old library book and um, it's not part of the series, just a standalone. But he's a good guy to know. Archimedes in the Door of Science. This is also by Jean Dundick, chapter book, and um, very good picture book if your children are a little bit younger. Here's Archimedes, mathematician and inventor. So from, if you're studying the, the Greek time period, these would be um, with that. Galen, I believe also would be in the Greek time period. You know, it's been a while since I homeschooled, so I kind of forget this stuff. Anyway, Galen, he was um, a physician, a doctor of the Roman Empire. And again, uh, Jean Bendick, a very popular science author. If you're um, into the um, early modern period, then um, Louis Pasteur and his wife, Marie, Madame Curie, um, and what, what they studied and what, what made them famous. Um, this is from a series called uh, the Signature, sorry, Signature Series. I get busy looking and I get all excited. Signature Series in there, you see that little thing down at the bottom, this little badge, that's how you know, know those books. Um, a very good series, written, there's a lot, mostly their books um, cover history, their biographies of famous people, but um, I really like these for science. If you have a little bit younger children, here's um, also about Pasteur and Madame Curie and um, what they were searching for. And these are, um, I, I don't think that they're part of a series. I think I just found them somewhere, I don't know where. Here's the doctor who invented x-rays, Dr. Ronchin. Beloved botanist is the story of Carl Linnaeus. He's the um, man who was responsible for the, um, the like kingdom phylum, the classifications. That's the word I'm looking for. Really good. Probably my favorite scientist of all is George Washington Carver. And um, if you don't know that he has a, a connection to Iowa State University, you should find out about that. Here's um, Carver's George. There's another one called George, just George Washington Carver, picture book for your little bit younger children. And a weed is a flower is also about the life of George Washington Carver. Very beautiful illustrations. Sometimes I buy books based on the illustrations as much as the text because they're just lovely. And if I think they're lovely, I know that children would too. Another really favorite series of mine is called the Let's Read and Find Out series. And these are pretty easy to find on um, Amazon or at thrift stores. Whenever I see one, I buy them because um, I really like them. Hospi or hospitals, libraries also have been getting rid of these and that's a shame. So here's like, if you have um, a child who's really into frogs and toads, there you go. Give them these books and they'll be able to tell you everything about frogs and toads until you won't care about them anymore. But they're fun. Kids love these books. Let me show you the inside a little bit. Not full color illustrations, but colored enough to keep uh, children's attention. So that's um, the way, that's how we used um, science books. We just picked a topic and then found books to go with it. Found projects, you have Pinterest, so there's probably no end of fun projects that you can find out there um, to do, to mount insects and 
make uh, bird feeders and all kinds of stuff. So that's the fun part and the part that your kids will not forget and, um, and remember uh, from your homeschooling days. So I hope that's helpful and um, you can find me um, on the discussion group if you have any questions about Living Books. I would always be glad to share more and um, give you some ideas about how to make it help you in your homeschool. Thanks for listening today. I'll